Um, the text and the shlokas we are reading today from uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Text 25. And um, the title of this chapter is uh, Dridrash Quits Home. So, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskrityam. Naram Cheva Narottamam. Devam Sarasvatim Vyasam. Tato Jaya Mudirae Nasta Prayashu Abadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki Krishnaya Vasudevaya Devaki Nandanaya Cha Nanda Gopa Kumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha okay. Tasya Pita Vade Hoyam Tasya Pita Vatava De Hoyam Kripanasya Jiji Visho Paraiti anichato jirno Paraiti anichato jirno Jaraya va sashi iva Jaraya va sashi iva Tasya pita va de hoyam Kripanasya Jiji Visho Paraiti Anichato Jirno Jaraya Vasashashi Iva Tasya Pita Vade Hoyam Kripanasya Jiji Visho Paraiti anichato jirno Jaraya vasashi iva Tasya pita vade hoyam Kripanasya jiji visho Paraiti anichato jirno Jaraya Vasashi Iva Tasya Pita Vade Hoyam Kripanasya Jiji Visho Paraiti Anichato Jirno Jaraya Vasashi Iva Tasya Pita Vade Hoyam Kripanasya Jiji Visho Paraiti Anichato Jirno Jaraya Vasashi Iva Ladies you Don't want to try? Okay um, Tasya Of this Api, in spite of, Tava, Yo, Deha, Body, I am, This, Kripa Nasya, Of one who is miserly, Jiji Visho, Of you who desire life, Pareti, Will dwindle, Anichata, Even unwilling, Jirna, 
deteriorated, jaraya, old, vasashi, garments, iva, like. So we have the translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So the translation, despite your unwillingness to die and your desire to live even at the cost of honor and prestige, your miserly body will certainly dwindle and deteriorate like an old garment. So we can all repeat, despite your unwillingness to die, and your desire to live, even at the cost of honor and prestige, your miserly body will certainly dwindle and deteriorate like an old garment. The purport. The words Kripanasya, Jiji Visho, are significant. There are two classes of men. One is called Kripana, and the other is called Brahmana. The Kripana, or the miserly man, has no estimation of his material body. But the Brahman has true estimation of himself and the material body. The Kripana, have, having a wrong estimation of his material body, wants to enjoy sense gratification with his utmost strength. And even in his old age, he wants to become a young man by medical treatment or otherwise. Dhridrashtra is addressed herein as a Kripana because without any estimation of his material body, he wants to live on at any cost. Vidur is trying to open his eyes so that he cannot live more than his term and that he must prepare for death. Such death is inevitable. Why should he accept such a humiliating position for living? It is better to take the right path, even at the risk of death. Human life is meant for finishing all kinds of miseries of material existence, and life should be regulated that one can achieve the desired goal. Dhridrashtra, due to his wrong conception of life, had already spoiled 80% of his uh, achieved energy. So it behooved him to utilize the remaining days of his miserly life for the ultimate good. Such a life is called miserly because one cannot properly utilize the assets of human form of life. Only by good luck does such a miserly man meet a self-realized soul like Vidur and by his instructions gets rid of the nations of material existence. So, Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vande Ham Shri Gurum Shri Yutapada Kamalam Shri Gurum Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragunatan Pitam Tam Sajivam Sad Baitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Deen Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishbhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Trubyascha Kripa Sindhu Vaevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi Gor Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Um, this um, particular verse is addressing the, um, the, the, the time when Vidur has um, come to deliver Dhridrashtra. So um, who is Vidur? Vidur is the brother 
of Dhritarashtra. And uh, Vidur, he was, um, he is the incarnation of uh, Yamaraj himself, the, the bestower of death. And who is Yamaraj? Yamaraj is, um, is a Mahajan. He is like, there are 12 Mahajans as we know. He is uh, uh, like Brahma or Narad Muni or uh, Pralad Maharaj or Bhishma Dev. So uh, then such a Mahajan, he is um, born as a Shudra because he was born from the womb of a Shudra. Servant woman, why was this? And uh, obviously, you would have read in the previous uh, shlokas that uh, Yamaraj was cursed uh, because he uh, wrongfully uh, arrested um, uh, or, or, or punished uh, uh, Rishi Muni. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Manduka Muni. And um, wrongfully because he was a child uh, and children below the age of eight whatever they do is not really considered to be uh, a sin or an offense so um, uh, then uh, Yamaraj was given this uh, curse because he was trying to punish uh, this Muni for a deed that he had done as an 80, you know, eight, 80 year old or below the age of 80 year old um, as a result that curse the Muni gave to Yamaraj he was born but the story behind that is uh, that it was Yamaraj, he, because he's such a Mahajan, and what do Mahajans do? They glorify the names of the Lord, of uh, Lord Krishna, of Hari, of Vishnu. His desire was actually to, uh, to come down and preach and, and sing the glories of the holy name as a Mahajan. And so this, uh, this is in Srila Prabhupada's class. Um, I think he gave that class in 1973 in Geneva somewhere. So uh, that class, in, in that class Prabhupada had said that Vid, uh, Vidur, who was Yamaraj, because it was his desire to preach the holy name, this drama was enacted and this was a curse um, that he was given, but in fact it was a blessing. So uh, here, this uh, Vidur, is um, he, he's, he's considering Dhritarash to be very dear brother. But he can see that uh, Dhridrashtra is, um, is is spending his the rest of his life in opulence and uh, and and wants to live like a king, and uh, he he can see the condition that Dhridrashtra is coming to, and he's trying to deliver Dhridrashtra because the end of the life basically. Uh, Vidur took the position of the spiritual master of Dhridrashtra because he was um, very compassionate. And that is what our spiritual master's um, duties are, to be compassionate. And the greatest one, obviously, that we know of our time is Srila Prabhupada. He was uh, the spiritual master. He is the spiritual master of all. And he, the reason he came down was to deliver all of us. And, and the qual quantity, quality, the duty of a spiritual master is actually not to uh, tell the disciple that this is a, a material nature and it is meant to be enjoyed. The duty of a material, the spiritual master is to warn the disciple of the nature of time and uh, to prepare the disciple to go back to Godhead. So every instruction that the spiritual master gives to the disciple, it might seem contrary, and I have personal experience. Uh, it might seem, no, uh, it, it is not what I want to do, or the disciple is not what the disciple wants to do, but that is the job of the spiritual master. It is to pull you back and, and tell you, hey, wake up. You know, this is the material world. It is temporary. You are going to die. Everybody is going to die. It's, it's, it's really, uh, we can't go around telling people you're going to die. But it is a fact. We are all going to die one day. And uh, what do we take with us? So here, Dhridrash is, is very attached to the opulence that he's, um, he's living in. And uh, Vidur is saying, no, 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 no. And, and the way to pull him out of that, Vidur actually humiliates and embarrasses him. He calls uh, sarcasm. He uses that. And of course, in the end, you will see uh, that um, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. So, um, uh, in the end, Dhridrash kind of, uh, actually Dhridrash follows Vidur and he accepts uh, Vidur as his spiritual master. Uh, the spiritual master, our spiritual master 
I've written it here. It is quite uh, nice. It says the spiritual masters are not meant to give some kind of material concessions to a disciple. In other words, if the disciple says, I want to, I don't know, uh, enjoy a beautiful wife or uh, enjoy a nice uh, husband, uh, the spiritual master will not say yes. It might come as a shock to you because they'll say, why does my spiritual master doesn't want me to get married? It is actually to disentangle you from entanglements. It is to disentangle you. And that is the main reason. So he's not going to tell you to go and enjoy it. Um, he does not humor the disciple into thinking this material world is a place of happiness. No. So rather like the sadhu, the business is to cut the knot of spiritual affection. He cuts the knot of spiritual entanglement, attachment. The spiritual master has to help the disciple to disentangle himself or herself or herself from the material world. And this is what Vidur has come to do to Dhridharash. Vidur being a Mahajan, he can see what's going to happen to Dhridharash and what his future is going to be like. Because at the end of the day, we will all die. You know uh, that, uh, that saying, time and tide waits for no man. Death will come. There's another very famous saying that goes in one of the, Bolli no, the Hollywood soaps. I'm not quite sure. But it says, like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. I think that it is very, it might be a soap, but like if you really look at the meaning of it. I've always held that meaning very dearly. Because um, the time when, uh, my, when the time came for my um, mother to expire, that was the... Um, to leave her body, that was what was going through my mind. But also, I was living in a flat, and um, the, uh, the landowner's mother was also about to leave her body. And suddenly, Krishna is telling me, like, sense through the hourglass, so the days of our lives. And I'm thinking, who's going to die? You know, Krishna does give you these messages. And the next morning, the, the lady, the, land, the landlady died. Uh, but what did she take with her? That is the question. Did she, or did she uh, attach herself to uh, uh, her husband or she had a son? Uh, did she chant the glories of the holy name? Will Dhridrashya do that? Or is he going to be uh, attached to the opulence? In fact, uh, we recite this. Um, uh, he was actually... Um, I've written it somewhere down here, but I've, since I've written so many things down... Um, he was, uh, Didrash was uh, attached to something that we recite every morning. Na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim, kavitamba jagdisha kamoy. He was attached to his wealth. And uh, the, his wife, or maybe beautiful wife. And he wanted a number of followers. And these are the three factors that entangle us in material, in material um, nature. We are attached to our wealth. We are attached to a beauty. Beauty of um, others or beauty of ourselves, uh, and we want a number of followers who admire us. And these attachments kind of pull you down and can cause you the downfall. And this is what Dhridrash was going through. And 80% of his life, according to this purport, he had spent doing those things. So this na dhanam na janam na sundarim, this one is uh, Lord Chaitanya's, um, Lord Chaitanya's um, prayers that he has given to deliver us because we will be going through the same things. We will also be attached to certain things. And uh, Krishna, by Lord Krishna's grace, if you become a devotee, he will arrange certain circumstances in your life that will take these attachments away. It's very painful to lose one's beloved. It is very painful to lose one's wealth. It is very painful to lose one's prestige in society extremely painful. But behind that pain, there is, um, there is a reason for it that is a blessing of our spiritual master. That there is this attachment, that this attachment is going to bring us back to the next life, the repeated cycle of birth and death. This is a very heavy uh, statement for those who are quite new to the Hare Krishna movement. Say, well, what is this lady telling us? 
let go of our money let go of our beloveds but at the end of the day we are trying to prepare you for death and this is what vidur came to do uh, and this is what our spiritual masters are preparing to do is preparing us for death so that at the end of the day uh, we see krishna and we go to krishna and we don't come back so uh, the the antidote for this obviously is the first verse of our shikshastakam cheto darpana majanam it uh, cleanses our heart of years of accumulated um, uh, what is it dust the dust of um, of being bewildered yes and um, it uh, it extinguishes the fire of conditional life of repeated birth and death so the maha sankirtan because uh, uh, what 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 vidur had um, explain to the rash was to come away with him to the forest and do his tapasya and meditation and and learn the art of self realization but for us this is not possible we are in kaliyug we can't go into the forest and do tapasya and meditation so for us chaitanya mahaprabhu has kindly given us the hari krishna maha mantra when the potency and the power is so great it can deliver the soul you don't have to be born again so that's what he kindly gave us this is what we do cheto darpana majanam we cleanse our hearts so that we are not attached and so that we don't want things but does it mean we should give up everything and not work and not you know pay the rent we should so um this uh, vidur he actually uh, even though he was a he was a mahajan he had to uh, he had to experience this uh, insult Duryodhana had insulted him and said you know what are you doing you are a son of a shudra and you know you want to live like a king this is not your rightful place and so vidur had to bear this insult and leave and as he was leaving he left his opulences because he was living like a king um he left his wealth he left his um, wife he left his all these followers maybe he was uh, in the in the kingly court in the in the kingdom the court of the kingdom he was the advisor so he was on a high status he had to leave that status too and he had to go so um but did vidur mind no he took this humiliation this insult as a boon because that gave him the impetus to spiritually realize himself and be materially detached because only a detached person only a disentangled person uh, can uh, save somebody from entanglement only a person who is free can free others only a person who is disentangled can do that so this brings us to the next point who is preaching <laughs> because the preacher cannot uh, cannot be uh, a preacher or person who preaches cannot 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 be entangled in material material natures can't can't be go- going out there to enjoy himself we can't have a i mean for example our spiritual masters are not doing that but say a spiritual master was doing that then they would be no longer in a position to preach and uh, bring people uh, you know deliver our our souls to back to godhead so uh, this disentanglement is necessary absolutely necessary to in order to preach because only a disentangled person can save someone from entanglement of the material nature so that's the point uh, what is the spiritual master here to do the spiritual master is here to uh, disentangle the disciple the disciple won't like it most of them it's quite a painful procedure we sometimes don't respond very well um but when you really look at it look at vidur he took that as a boon and that is what we should do too take that example if something bad is happening in our life we should take that as an impetus for spiritual advancement when life gives you lemons you make lemonade right so when uh, life gives you this spiritual lemons you make a spiritual lemonade and offer it to krishna in other words make the best of it turn to krishna surrender yourself to krishna there are six principles of surrender if you really want to know what is surrender uh, first of all we accept what is 
acceptable in Krishna's service. Everything that is acceptable to Krishna in his service, we accept that. That's the first principle. The second principle is to reject everything that is not acceptable to Krishna, any service. And that's what sannyas means, to accept and reject. Uh, third principle is to accept that Krishna will protect you. In other words, Krishna is going to um, protect you, not any other god. You don't call any other. You have soul um, faith and absolute certainty. It's Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Always Krishna. And a third, fourth one is that he will maintain you. He will give you everything. These are the six principles. And every devotee will go through this, by the way. While we are going through these things, it's, it's quite painful. The fourth one is that um, Krishna will maintain you. And the fifth one is self-surrender to Krishna. We give everything, ourselves, everything to Krishna. That's called surrender. And the last one is humility. And that's the bitter pill. I had a, every disciple, every devotee will go through this. And humility, I found personally, extremely bitter, bitter pill. <laughs> you really go and hit, hit the rock bottom. And then you, you, you t take your time to realize what's happening to me, what am I supposed to do. Then you realize, hopefully at that time, the instructions that uh, Srila Prabhupada has given in our books and our spiritual master has given. I'm very lucky. I, um, whenever something happens, I send an email straight to my Gurudev. And he knows exactly what is happening. Actually, the spiritual master is an expert in that science. They know exactly how to um, give the proper instructions given your situation, your individual situation, and tell you what to do so that you may actually advance spiritually. It can be a very painful situation. I was in Paramata and I lost my job. I lost my money. I lost my family. I lost um, even the service at this temple. Uh, everything at that time. And I'm in a, in a lady's body and I was too young. I considered myself still young. Gurudev said, just renounce everything, give up everything and just go. And I went to Moolamba for six months. Uh, but that was Krishna's plan. Because there, I met uh, our DT worship minister of ISKCON, Narasimha Kavacha. And he taught me DT worship. So that's on my spiritual CV. Being trained by someone as high, uh, on a high scale, level scale of Narasimha Kavacha. Uh, and uh, from there, things changed. I started giving Srimad Bhagavatam classes and then Bhagavad Gita classes and leading the Kirtans. I mean, you just like openly, like that was a, a turnaround point. It was time to give up a lot of attachments and, 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 and um, take up what was I, I was really had the potential for. This is my own personal experience, but they, everybody goes through that. Everybody is going to have this in their lives. Um, they, that's a turning point, and Krishna is making these arrangements. And uh, in there somewhere, I also had written a letter to my Guru Dev, and I said, I want to, this is the, we recite these 10 offenses in the mornings, right? And the third offense is what? To never disobey the orders of the spiritual vasta, right? That's the third offense. And this one really illustrates, and Guru Dev told this story in his class as well. I wrote a nice letter to my spiritual master saying, because I'm a woman, I cannot wear sannyasi's clothes, saffron. I cannot renounce like that. You've asked me to renounce, but I can't do, I'm going to wear white saris. I told him that. I'll wear a white sari. And he wrote back, Shama Priya, please don't do that. And I said, what does he know? What I'm going through, I'm going to wear white sari anyway. So I kind of disobeyed what he had. Well, in my mind, I'm thinking I'm going to disobey that. And I went to Liverpool just before going to Molba. I went to Liverpool to buy some white saris, actually. <laughs> it was stupid of me. I was too young for that. Now that I remember, now that I look back. And um, of course, I couldn't find a single white sari there. It's a whole shop of whole street of Indian shops, not a single white sari. I was thinking, what's happening? And then I suddenly saw a sale. And you know what ladies do when they see sale? Sale, sale, sale. And you see dollar signs in your eyes and you run for the sale. That's what ladies do. They see a sale and they're they, attracted like magnets. And that's what I did. And I went and saw a sale sari. It was a rusty brown colored sari. It was a, I went and bought that. I'd gone to buy a white one, I came back with a colored one. And uh, I came home and I realized what I did. I was so disgusted with myself. I just took that sari and dumped it on the altar. And I said to Krishna, 
you didn't give me a white sari, you wear this, you take it. I, I really was very genuinely angry with him, my own DT. You can't do that, I wouldn't advise you to do that. But I was just so upset about it, I got angry with him. I dumped the sari on his altar and I went away in my room to sulk for an hour. I was like sullen face and I was not very happy. I was very, very disgusted with myself, angry with Krishna, not happy. And then one hour later after I calmed down, I came out of my mm, room, there's a corridor and there what do I see on my corridor? I live alone by the way. I used to live alone by the, the, the time. So there's nobody in the house, but there was somebody standing in the corridor. Who was that? That was my DT. And he was wearing my sari as a turban on his head. He was wearing my sari as a turban on his head. And I told this to my, my spiritual master. I said, I tried to disobey you, bought this sari, and, um, and look at what Krishna done. I had I had dumped that story with uh, with a lot of anger on Krishna. Must have been a genuine anger. That's why he genuinely responded. He came back and anyway, since then I've been wearing colored saris. By the way, I never disobeyed my Guru Maharaj after that. And I offer all my saris to Krishna in case he wants to wear that as a turban again. So, for those ladies who buy their outfits, do that sometime before you wear it. Give it to Radharani. Maybe she'll give it to Krishna. But that. That was very nice pastime. Uh, don't do things that you are not ready to do. Never do that. And always obey your spiritual master, whatever he says. Because what he says represents Lord Krishna. So that was very interesting. Um, and Vidur came to actually warn Dhridrash of the greatest fear. Because we are all in this fear of losing our bodies. It's, it's really hard to die. We don't want to die. It's it's very fearful process. Um, but he was there to tell Vidur, um, Dhridrashtra, Vidur was there to tell Dhridrashtra that the greatest fear is the fear of losing Krishna. That is a devotee's greatest fear when you really look down and when you really think about it. The greatest fear is of forgetting Krishna. Because at the time of death, if we forget Krishna, where are we going to go? So every, every devotee will come to this stage where something will happen in their lives and they say, oh, to hell with Krishna conscious. They will say, do that. Because they're so in so much pain, anxiety, whatever's happening, whatever situation. And they'll say, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to leave it, drop it. Because I can't do this anymore. But that is a, that, and as soon as you think that you are in greatest danger at that time. Because you will forget Krishna. We cannot do that under any circumstance. We cannot, we cannot, cannot, cannot forget Krishna. So important. Because uh, as soon as we forget Krishna, what do we, what do we, what do we get? Greatest danger equals losing Krishna equals repeated birth and death. That's what the formula is. Greatest danger equals forgetting Krishna equals repeated life of birth and death. We come back. So that is the greatest fear. So uh, in one of his classes, Tamal Krishna Maharaj had actually um, said that Prabhupada, when, uh, because the, he was there when Prabhupada left his body, he said Prabhupada was fearless in terms of death. He was fearless. And, um, you know, because why? Because we, we are devotees, we know we'll see Krishna at the end of this life. We know that. Why? Because we've been chanting all our life, we've been serving. So a devotee has to, we're not saying that you should start your practice later in life. You should practice now. This is the time because death can come at any time. Knock on anybody's door. Hello, I'm here to get you. And that time you go, oh, I know Krishna. He's my friend. He's going to come and get me. He's going to send his messengers to come and get me if he doesn't come. So that is the training that Srila Prabhupada is giving us. And that's the training that uh, Tamal Krishna Maharaj had said in his class. He said, we should be so solid that we'll be fearless of death. That's how we train our devotees, fearless. And this is what Vidur had come to tell the Rash, that you are actually in this bond of uh, material nature, and you've been enjoying this life as a king. He even insulted Dhridrash, left, right, and center, very, very sarcastically, so that he'll wake up. And Dhridrash, you will find later on in the, in the 
canto, in the following this canto, he later on when you read it, Dhritarash agreed with him and he went. He left with Vidur uh, to the forest and he was followed by his very chaste wife, Gandhari. She went with him. And they are in the forest, they had uh, got by the mercy of Vidur, they learned the art of self realization and they delivered themselves back to Godhead. So, Dhridrasht was such an envious person in his young days. He was the one who was very symbolic, uh, very big element in this whole Kurukshetra battle. He was the reason why all these hundred, you know, Duryodhan was like that. He never corrected Duryodhan. All these sins and offenses were happening. Draupadi is disrobing, everything, you name it. The Pandavas were going to be killed. Dhridrasht was a king. He, was, he could have stopped all of that. So just imagine the amount of offenses he did. But at the end of the day, Krishna sent someone to deliver him. Vidur. So imagine the, the unlimited compassion of Lord Krishna. It doesn't matter what you did in your previous life, in this life, does not matter. Dhridrash had committed this offense of uh, like conducting the whole Kurukshetra battle was because of him. Such an evil son, Duryodhan. So Dhridrash's burden of offenses was great. Yet Krishna sent a um, Mahajan like Vidur. What has Krishna done for us? He has sent Srila Prabhupada for us in this day of Kali Yuga, in this age of Kali Yuga. Just imagine the compassion. So Prabhupada is here. And, and who else has he sent? He has sent our spiritual master. Every day we should go down on knees and thank Lord Krishna for our sending our spiritual master in our lives. He is so important. He is the one standing in between you, uh, Godhead, and the repeated birth and cycle of life, that one. Repeated birth and death. He's, that's Gurudev here, right there. He's got the key and opens the door. There you go. To Krishna. It's so important in our lives. And, uh, and um, obeying his instructions is really important. It doesn't matter how bitter the pill might be, but you obey that. Because it's training us to be fearless. It's pre pre preparing us for death so that we don't come back. So um, that is the purpose of the spiritual master. The qualities of so this particular uh, verse, uh, to sum up in a nutshell, what is the purpose of the spiritual master? The spiritual master is there to disentangle the disciple and, and warn them about the, the time factor. You're going to die one day. And what, are you, what have you done with your life? Have you been like Dhridraj, wasting your life away? Or have you, um, you know, decided to surrender to Krishna? Give everything to Krishna, Lord Krishna. So the purpose of the spiritual master in the face of uh, Lord Vidur, what he's done, like Lord, this in the example. So that and the qualities of the preacher. Vidur is quite renounced. He's Yamaraj himself. He doesn't need to come down as a Shudra, but he did. He didn't need to be insulted to, you know, leave all his wealth by Duri, somebody like Duryodhan. He went through that. That is a boon. A devotee never thinks that an insult is a, is a curse, or a, ne a devotee never takes offense. I have been asked to leave ashrams too, but I never took offense. The reason is, of course, we feel hurt in the beginning. Uh, you know, say, Mataji, dear Shama, her grace, Shama Priya, <laughs> Mataji, I'm asking you to get out of the temple. Uh, no, that is an impotence for spiritual advancement. You sit there, you realize, what is Krishna telling you? Krishna is telling you, practice the instructions I have given you. Think of me. Trust me. This is your time for spiritual advancement. You are learning humility. You are learning forgiveness. You are learning detachment from everything you are attached to. We can even be attached to our prestige. We can think we're a very high-level high devotee, or we can think we're a very rich man, or you know, woman, or very beautiful, or something. We can think like that. Krishna removes all that. He is the all devouring time. He says so in the Bhagavad Gita. I devour everything. He takes away everything. But um, that is a time that you take for reflection. And then you realize, oh, I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be forgiving. I'm supposed to be, uh, you know, taking this time to uh, get closer to Krishna, to chant more, uh, to see how I can serve. 
uh, at that time, the first class I took was, uh, was going through hell at that time. After my first class that I ever gave, this is not, uh, not, not, not this time, obviously, the first class I ever gave, I was uh, going through some lots of stuff. But even despite that, I gave that class and I was exhausted. I passed out on my room after the class. Straight after the class, I passed out. For the whole day, I was out probably fainted or something, because emotionally I was so mm, weak at that time. But uh, you never give up your service. And uh, we never get scared in the face of death. By Lord Krishna's arrangement, I saw both my parents die before me. So I've seen both my parents, my father and my, my mother died right there. I was watching them, both of them. And my mother, I was holding her hand as she left her body. So I know what death is and especially to the most important people of your life. Uh, Krishna is preparing you for death, making you strong. Krishna is making you very strong to combat the material uh, attachments. It's very difficult for a wealthy man to, uh, to realize this. The demigods, they think they'll live forever because they're enjoying all these opulences. It's very hard. That's why the demigods have not gone back to Godhead. They're still enjoying dancing. <laughs> Srila, my Gurudev had actually described that when the ladies dance, the Apsaras dance in the... Um, his words were really, really funny. He said, that's no place for a sannyasi when the ladies and Apsaras, they dance in, in, in the heavenly planets. The things they get up to. I don't know what they get up to. But um, that's... So it's very difficult for de demigods. The point is to realize this detachment and go back to Krishna. Um, and the, the other point that, uh, that we come to, I'm coming to the conclusion, was insult, like Vidur had uh, experienced. It's an impedance, it's a, it's a factor to advance spiritually. That's the point. And uh, there's one more, there's a real love for a family. It's not to uh, make them attached, but actually to preach to them and deliver them to, uh, to back to Godhead. And this is the last instruction my spiritual master gave me, and I can't do this one. <laughs> it's very hard, because my family is extremely, they are all like tigers and lions. They have so strong personalities. It's very hard to sway them, to tell them to you know, become devotees. He wants to initiate my family, and I'm like, oh, how is that going to happen? I, I, I don't know, Gopinath, I need your help, because it's, very, it's almost practically impossible. Um, they're very strong, strong uh, genetics and running in the family. They all are very independent. But this is not just me. Everybody's probably facing this. They have members in their families who just won't be Krishna conscious. It's very difficult. But the real love that we can show, uh, just like Vidur is a family of the Drash, that's his real love. He's protecting the Drash. He's trying to deliver him back to God. That is why we should never become parents if we can't deliver our children, actually. We should only become parents if we can deliver our children back to Godhead. Otherwise, there's no point in becoming parents. So that's another point in this uh, particular situation. Real love for real family means to give them Krishna, means to, de to deliver them. And you can only deliver them if you are being delivered yourself. You can only tell them to be detached if you are detached yourself. You can only give happiness if you have happiness to give. You can't give, go, go and tell them, hey, sing, laugh, dance when you are totally depressed yourself. A biology teacher can't go and teach somebody mathematics if they're not specialized in mathematics. So you've got to be a devotee yourself in order to give devotion to somebody. You've got to be disentangled yourself in order to disentangle somebody else. You can't be attached to something and tell somebody, no, you, you become detached. It's not like that. That's just the way it is. So that was another point in this particular shlok. And um, the last one, oh well, this um, Vidu story, the qualities, but another one is uh, the final sentence I'd like to say is if we have, if we still have material desires, then we have failed. All the sweat and hard work of our spiritual masters, Srila Prabhupada, it's all gone over your head. Because we still have our material desires. Because when we go to Krishna, we're not supposed to have any material desires. We're not supposed to say, I want to be the king of this world, I don't want to enjoy this, da, 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 da. Because you'll come back to, you know, this planet. So you've got to not have material desires. If you still have material desires, you've failed. Failure. Uh, 
But in saying that, I'm not criticizing anybody. We are all stupid people. We have taken, make the mistake of being born in this material planet. We are all at different stages of um, spiritual life. So nobody is wrong here. Everybody is trying. But uh, really, we should be going out there to spread the holy names. And the true soldiers of our movement are our book distributors. They're the frontline soldiers. Because that's most important, is to get the message out there, the Sankirtan movement. So that is all I have to say today. Um, does anyone have any comments or questions? Yes, Prabhu. Yes. Okay. That is a very good point. If we take an insult as a spiritual impotence, can we go and insult somebody else to teach them a lesson? Is that right? <laughs> the answer is obviously no. Don't ever think of that because you'll be committing Vaishnava Prad. That's the highest sin you can commit is to insult a Vaishnava. Don't do that. Please don't. Can't stress enough. Don't do that. That's Vaishnava Prad. Vaishnava Prad also means Vaishnaviya Prad. So don't think, oh, this is a stupid Mataji who's wearing a sari, doesn't know a thing. You know, no, actually. Uh, we can't do that. Krishna arranges that. So it's Krishna's business. Uh, yes, uh, Vidur didn't, uh, as Yamaraj, he didn't really deliberately go and insult anybody. It was a... a, a an arrangement of circumstances and their players involved. So we can't artificially create that insult to teach somebody a lesson. We have to depend on Krishna to do that. And Krishna will only do that if he's pleased with that devotee. He will arrange that insult because he's pleased. It's not because Krishna hates this person. Krishna arranges these insults and all these situations to make this person spiritually strong, calling them back. Because Krishna wants that person. Krishna dearly loves that person. So he says, okay, I'll remove everything that is blocking your path to coming towards me. If you can imagine a runner running a marathon or whatever it is, they, they jump over these hurdles. So Krishna arranges these insults to remove the hurdles. So please, never, 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 <laughs> don't arrange those insults yourself. It's a very bad idea. Okay, any other questions? Any other comments? No? Okay. Srimad Bhagavad Puran ki. Jai.